again, welcome back to another video, or if you're new here, my name's Emily, or M for short, and I make lots of arty videos, I do. I'm currently in my third year of illustration, final year, and yeah, I film lots about that, and I just just make lots of arty videos in general. Anyway, that's that's my quick introduction. Um, in this video, I'm painting a lot of pots. I think it was in the last... I think it was last video I showed there was like a segment of me making all these pots out of clay I made them all out of air dry clay um, and I did want to have the the making of the pots and the painting of the pots in one video but anyway that just obviously didn't end up happening because it it was too drawn out over a long amount of time so yeah anyway so I got around to filming the painting of these pots and it was just taking forever and I had loads of footage so I thought you know what I'll make it into its own video a dedicated video um, just to me painting these pots and I could do like a bit of um yeah just have a nice catch up chat with you guys i really didn't know what to talk about for this voiceover um so i took to instagram and thought i could do like a nice just q a i suppose so i i put up on my instagram story last night asking for any questions and i got lots through so thank you very much for anyone who did ask a question i have done a q a in the past if you scroll back a bit you'll find some sort of draw with me with like a q a in the title um so i'm going to try and answer slightly different questions but they might be an overlap because I can't remember what questions I answered in them so I tried to answer different ones but I'm sure there'll be some similar ones but who knows maybe my answer has changed since then it was a while ago so yeah I thought let's just get into it oh actually before I get into it I'll just explain these pots a little bit so you know what you're watching these are I made these for my projects I um, did this project about the fairy tale of Thumbelina and I was trying to combine I was just playing around with ornamentation, that was like the main theme of my project, like just decorative art and I've been trying to fuse that with storytelling and seeing how um, storytelling and ornamentation together just make each other stronger um, and then part of that project I thought I would have a go at making some pots because um, I, I did a lot of like just you know paintings and normal stuff on paper and I was just you know I'm just a bit sick of painting on paper to be honest and just doing flat things and I thought let's have a go at doing some clay um, I don't really do clay very often, the only clay thing I've ever done really is making magnets and that's quite easy because it's just like a flat bit of clay and then you just paint on top of it, there's no like actual moulding I suppose. Yeah anyway so this was for a project and yeah so there's a little bit of story of the Fumbelina in there, later on you'll see me making a tiny little Fumbelina um, and have her like interacting with the pots so they're all like nature themed. So yeah that's a bit of a backstory behind them, let's get into some questions. The first question, when did you first discover you had a passion for art? I mean, I guess I could just say, oh, I've been drawing my whole life. But I suppose like I didn't start taking it properly serious. And by serious, I mean just something I started to do more regular that rather than... Because I feel like when I was little, I'd go through phases of drawing. Or I'd like draw for... Like be really into drawing for a week and then not draw for like a month and then be really into drawing for a few days and then not draw for a while. So I did that when I was little. And then I didn't start taking it seriously until... And I mean by serious, I mean just drawing more regular, like I drawing at least every other day was until year 10, which is, God, how old are you in year 10? You are 14 slash 15, I suppose, yeah, started taking it seriously then. And then I started thinking it would be like a potential job in college, I reckon. So that's when you're 17 and 18. Although even in college, I remember being stuck between art and dance, because obviously I really liked art, but I also really liked dancing and performing and like singing and dancing, because I did that a lot. Uh, I did like a lot of outside of school clubs. I went to like a dance school separate to school and I was there like 13 hours a week. So dance was a very big part of my life. So in college, I also did dance for A-levels. So it was a part of me which kind of wanted to go and do that. Uh, but obviously art took over and I decided to just go with that. But I still dance now for, for fun. I'm part of a dance society, but obviously that's just for fun now. But hey, if, I, if the art thing didn't ever work out, I reckon I probably would have, you know, given dance a proper go. I don't think it was until I was 19 that I just realised I wanted to be an illustrator though. Because I knew I wanted to do art, but I didn't know which way to go. And I think when I was 19 is when I thought, oh yeah, illustrations illustrations the one for me. Okay, I'm going to try and get a bit quicker answering questions because that one, I think I went off on a bit of a tangent there. Let's go for another one. How disciplined do I have to be for my work to be amazing as yours? Oh, first off, thank you, thank you. It's hard to say because just draw for fun. I don't think you should force yourself to do art. If, if it's something you genuinely want to do as a job and you have a passion for, then I feel like you'll naturally just want to make art. And like, if you force yourself to do it, 
it might not be fun anymore. I mean, there are times where I really just don't want to do any art. There's quite a lot of times that I don't want to do art because obviously I do it for a degree. I have to. And because of that, I have gotten a lot better. Um, just because of that, like you have to do art every day. Like there's no getting around it. So you have, you, you do get, you improve a lot faster than I think you would if you didn't like have deadlines and like a purpose to be drawing other than just like for yourself. Um, like having like that degree and deadlines forces you <laughs> to draw a lot more than you would. Not that like you need to do a degree in art to get better at it. It's like something you can just do on your own, like <laughs> obviously. Um, but I feel like the degree gives you more motivation and more reason to do it. But anyway, I don't even know. <laughs> How do I answer that? I draw most days. Sometimes I won't draw for a bit. If it's like, I mean, it's the Christmas holidays now. I plan on not drawing for at least a week. Um, so that would be nice to have a bit of a break. But I suppose to get good quick, it's like how quick do you want to get good? You know, if you want to gradually get better, then a bit here and there is fine. But if you want to get better really quickly, then I don't know, draw every day is hard to say. Tips for starting um, an online shop. I do have tips. Start small. I started really small. Um, I think I spent around £50 in total. I just did prints. I think I had five different listings. Um, yes, yeah, so I did five different prints. I bought about 20 of each print. Um, so yeah, £50 in total, which at the time was a big investment. And I, I remember the packaging stuff. I bought pretty cheap envelopes just from like, the supermarket. And I was making them more sturdy by just using cardboard I had lying about. And so I was just try and do everything as cheap as you can, but like don't sacrifice quality, I suppose, as well. To get really high quality stuff, you do have to spend more. So it's like finding the balance between not spending too much because you don't know how the shop's going to do. And it's like a big investment when you don't really know if anyone's going to buy anything. But also spending enough where it's like good quality um yeah so 50 pound for me was was that that budget the, the total for that um and luckily because i already had an audience to target it towards because i had the youtube going i think at the time i had around 8,000 followers on youtube i'm um, sorry subscribers on youtube and maybe 5,000 on instagram so i already had a bit of an audience to you know advertise it to which was obviously a big help um but i don't think i think if you don't have that like an instagram would be a massive help. I remember my brother's girlfriend started an Etsy shop from kind of nothing. She had like no um, followers and she started an Instagram page and she just posted loads. And within like a few months, she was getting loads of followers really quickly because of just how hard she was going at it. And because of that, it was translating to shop sales. So you don't have to have like a pre-existing audience to have a successful online shop. But yeah, just start small and gradually get better. Um, like gradually start investing more money when you feel more confident that people are going to buy stuff. Now for a shop update, I can spend around like £400, which I know to some people have, who have really big shops, like that's nothing, like they can spend £400 on one print. Um, but to me, that's a lot. So yeah, gradually spending more and more each shop update, gradually improving your packaging. Yeah, just do it step by step, I suppose. Is there anything art-wise you would want to do if money wasn't an issue? I like this question. I would love to do, like this is in my, my Etsy shop, if I ever get the opportunity, it would be amazing. I would love to design my own pair of socks, which is a little bit out there, but I love socks. I'm really into socks. Like my sock drawer, it's very colorful. I honestly, I couldn't care less about the clothes I'm wearing other than my socks. <laughs> Obviously I care a little bit, but um, yeah, when I'm picking out my outfit, the socks are the bit I get most excited to pick. Like, my clothes, like if you know me, I wear the same clothes again and again and again because I just, I'm not really like one of those people who gets really excited about picking an outfit. I don't like pick out my outfit the day before and stuff, but like my housemates do and they get really into picking outfits and I'm just there like, oh, I'm just gonna wear the same thing I've been wearing all week. <laughs> um, but my socks, no, I, I, I take them seriously. Yeah, I'd really love to design a pair of socks, but I don't even know where to start with that. It's probably quite expensive to do that but maybe one of these days i'll have some of my own socks <laughs> how did you find your style which is distinctly yours um instantly recognizable uh, now that question i don't really feel like i have a style and i have said this before um i feel like my style is constantly changing i don't look at my art and think that there's a distinct style like i don't draw something going into it and thinking about a specific style i just draw how i draw and it looks how it looks in the moment um i mean i guess when you do look at my art there is some similarities like color palettes and stuff but i use so many different medias that it looks different to me 
And because of uni projects, you're forced to do so many things outside your comfort zone, where it's like, I don't know how to draw that specific thing for this project in my style, so you're kind of forced to just draw it how you want to draw it in that moment. So yeah, I don't really, I mean, I guess some people might think I have a style, I don't. I guess my, I, I mean, you could look at my art and see that there are some similarities, but I wouldn't be able to sit here and list off things which are, like, very particular to how I draw. I don't know, it changes. I think a few months ago I felt like I had a style and then I've just kind of grown out of that and I've started drawing differently. But like these are things that I think only I notice. Um, but yeah, I, I guess don't don't worry too much about having a style, it just happens. And even if you don't have a style, I don't think it's a big issue. What is your uh, favourite book you're reading right now? Well, first off, I don't really read. I'm not a big reader, I think I've read I mean, other than like primary school when you're forced to read and high school, I suppose. I think I've read about three books willingly for fun. <laughs> I just don't really read. Um, and only recently, and by recently I mean like a week ago, I got my first ever book for my birthday. <laughs> I own a book now, guys. It's a um, Parents in Hell book. I really like the podcast. Rob and Josh, Rob Beckett, Josh Widdicombe. I watch, they have a podcast called Parents in Hell and I love it. I listen to it all the time. It's like my go-to background noise. It's a, like if I'm, whenever I walk places and I have my head headphones in, you can guarantee that I'm listening to that podcast. Um, so my boyfriend got me the book for my birthday because I recently came out of a book. Oh, and they also got me tickets to go see the live show, which I'm very excited about. But yeah, that's what I'm reading. I don't know if you was probably wanting like an art book. I don't own an art book. I would like to have an art book. You know when people like release books with all their art in and they're really pretty? And you can just look at them and be inspired. One day I'm, I'd like to have one of them. I just don't really know where you get them from. Like you don't see them in shops. I should own more books. I know I should, but I just don't. But maybe this is the starting point. Maybe this this one book will get me in. Give me the reading bug. Oh, also I got my mum for a birthday Bob Mortimer's new book called Satsuma Complex, I think. Um, and because I just bought it like a bit. I bought it like a few weeks before her birthday, it was just lying around in my room, so I started reading that, and that was actually really good, I got halfway through. It's like a mystery, um, quite funny, because Bob Martin was a comedian. Um, yeah, I think I just, I would, if I was to read books, it would just be like funny books from comedians, probably. How did you motivate yourself to do uni work when it got too overwhelming? Like, ultimately, like, the only way to be less overwhelmed by the work is to do the work, because the more work you do, the less work there is to do. <laughs> was that worded really badly? I don't know. Um, I guess when I'm feeling overwhelmed, which can happen quite a lot because it's a lot of work to do, I, I just like, instead of thinking about all the work I have to do as this big giant hill I have to climb, it's like, right, what, what little thing can I work on just for today? It's like breaking it up into days. Like I have this giant project to do, which is really overwhelming and I don't know where to start but all I have to do right now is one thing on this one day. It's like, what am I doing on this day? Have, and then I get to the end of the day, have I completed it? Yes, if I haven't, I'll work on it tomorrow, but it's just one little step at a time. And then before you know it, you look back and you've made a whole project. It's like, oh God, how did I get here? Um, yeah, just breaking it down one step at a time. It can be really overwhelming, so making sure you do give yourself the breaks. I try to when I can, but it's not always possible to have the weekends off. I mean, I say I have the weekends off, but usually on the weekends I'm, just, I'm working on other things like my YouTube videos, I get an Instagram post ready, I'm working on my Etsy shop. Um, but for me, that's fun. Like, I really, I really do find that fun. Um, so, yeah. Having breaks when you can, if possible. I know sometimes you just can't because of the workload. Um, and trust me, like, this past project, there's been many late nights, like, all these pots that I'm painting in this video. I was staying up really late to get these done. I mean, really late for me is about like one o'clock, half one, um, when I usually go to bed at like 11. <laughs> so I, when sometimes you just have to stay up late to get the work done, but then it's knowing that after I have done that, I can have the weekend off because I worked really hard to make sure I could have the weekend off. That's kind of like how I do it. I um, hope that helped. Do you ever find uni drains you so much that it's hard to make art just for yourself? Yes, I, when uni is happening, when uni's in full swing, I wave goodbye to personal art, it's just not happening. I don't, as much as I would like to do personal art, I don't want to put extra strain on myself when I have uni to do, I have YouTube to do, I have a shop to run, uh, although to be honest, when I'm at uni, my mum and looks after the shop for me, which is a big help, um, and my dad, and my dad works on it as well, <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, but yeah, uni's 
it's just so creatively draining i don't have any extra creative juices to give to personal art and i just have to wave goodbye to that for a bit and i know that once holidays come around i can work on personal art um but what i do i mean i don't know what it's like on other courses but for me at the moment on my course it's very self-directed so i'm picking the project that i do i decide what i do so make it something that i would do for personal art like my last project that i just finished the fumbelina project which i'm working on in this video like that's art that i just wanted to make and i worked a project around that now so that's a good way to do it but i know sometimes you can't always do that like the projects just aren't what you want to do um but i feel like even if it is like a rubbish project like i remember last year i had a pro a project on typography which is just just yuck, yucky do not like typography but it's like right i have this thing that i really don't want to do and really doesn't interest me interest me how can i make it as fun as possible um because i feel like with art subjects well at least from my perspective and my experience there is a little bit of freedom even if it is a project we've set like you know that has been set by the teachers i feel like even then there is freedom to kind of do what you want so make the uni work your personal art i suppose if you can that's what i do um like these pots i was having a very fun time i mean it was a lot of work and it was quite stressful to get it done in the time limit but these are pots that i would have quite liked to have make made just by myself in my own time so make the projects the work that you want to make because then you're kind of like you know you're making personal art but it's also for a uni project are you planning on doing a master's uh, nope I have no desire to do a master's it really doesn't interest me i just feel like i'm ready to be done with education <laughs> you know it's my whole life in education one final push and i'm out of it and i just want to start trying to make it as an illustrator um that's just personally my perspective i'm, I'm not really interested in doing a master's as scary as it is and as daunting as it is i just want to get going and do it what is your favorite thing from your shop Oh, that's a tricky one. I like quite a lot of things. My shop is mainly, well, it's just print stickers and I have one pin in there, my first ever pin. Um, so it's not, it's not it's not the biggest shop ever, but I'm quite happy with the size of it at the moment. Um, I'd say my favorite print, I'll pop it up on screen, is this one. It's my lovely insect print. I painted this over summer. I'm really proud of it. Um, and you know like sometimes the things you're most proud of and the things you like the most don't sell as well like it sold a few of them but it's not sold as many as i thought it would and that happens quite a lot like i find the things that i like the most don't sell as much <laughs> as i thought they would the most popular things on my shops are the collage landscapes which is understandable i feel like a nice pretty collage landscape is a bit more it's got a wider audience than people interested in insects I also really like this pin, my first ever pin. I just think it's so cute and it's also because it's like it's like a new product for me. It's also just quite exciting. And whenever I pack a pin, I have to use a box instead of an envelope and it's just fun to pack something a little bit different. Um so yeah, my, they're my favorite things. What is your current favorite palette? Do you choose colors intuitive oh, intuitively? I'll say that again. What is your current favorite palette? Do you choose colors intuitively? um i feel like my favorite like, this has been my favorite palette for like a year at least now i'll try and find a piece of art that i've done which uses all my favorite colors there's probably actually that insect piece that i just put up on screen but if i can find something else i'll pop it up um i really like greens i like the green like, greens which are on the bluer side and then greens which are on the yellow side i don't really like true greens like green greens i like blue greens and yellow greens but not green greens <laughs> um they're what i like i and they're just anything any warm colors your reds your oranges like your muted autumn colors um i also really like this one specific shade of blue it's i'll pop up a picture on screen of a collage i use which use it the color of blue i guess it's like a it's like right in between blue and purple um it's the color of this cottage like little house that i collaged i really love that shade of blue um and i'll pop another one up on screen why not whilst we're here the color of this mouse's jumper is one of my favorite colors at the moment like a really muted sort of mustardy yellow i just think it's a really nice color um but yeah they've been my favorite colors for quite a while and i don't see that changing anytime soon I like the occasional purple as well, but it has to be a very specific shade of purple. 
I'm very picky when it comes to purples. I'm also very picky when it comes to blues, but nearly any shade of green I like and any sort of warmish colour. Um, anything on the red to yellow spectrum I'm, I'm a big fan of. <laughs> so yeah, I like a lot of colours to be honest, I'm not really too strict. Right, I think we're coming to the end of the video now. I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint these pots. It was hopefully it's been relaxing and maybe you've been doing some art along with me and you've enjoyed listening to me answer some questions. Um, I hope it was entertaining somewhat and it wasn't too rambly and I hope to make a video before Christmas but I'm not sure because I've got lots of planned over these next few weeks with family events um, and I don't really know how much art I'm going to be making because I need, I need a bit of a break from art to be honest so I'll try to get something made um, but I'm not going to like force it so you'll, I'll keep my Instagram updated no matter what um, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye!